Newcastle Underline 2021 Virtual Festival. My name is Catherine Page and it's been my pleasure to adjudicate all the piano classes in the festival this year. And what a joy it has been. Even though we're not together in person, I really feel like we've taken part in a festival. As I've listened to all of your performances, I know how much care has gone into making these recordings. I think that even though we've been in a terrible situation with lockdown and not being able to have face-to-face -face lessons, not being able to go to school, there have been some advantages. And one of those advantages is the fact that you have learned how to make these recordings and to give performances, an actual performance for an audience um, with actually no one in the room. And that is a skill. That is a real skill and it's not easy. In some ways, it's easier to just get up and play in front of an audience, but recording yourself, as I'm sure many of you have discovered, is a real challenge. You've probably recorded it many, many times and you're probably still not happy with it. Um, and what a skill that you have now to take forward. Don't stop, even when we're back to face-to-face -to -face lessons, don't stop using recordings as an invaluable way to learn, to reflect, to listen back to what you have recorded and really hear what you're doing. It's very common not to truly hear what we're doing as we play. So recording is a wonderful thing to continue to do. Uh, this is class 103, which is the grades three to four class. I hope my admin skills at looking at everything on my computer as we go um, work. So apologies if they don't, I'll do my very best. Um, so we started off um, with Oscar, number one, who played the Disco Baroque by Alan Bullard. Um, first of all, congratulations to all of you, including Oscar, who introduced the pieces. This really gave us a sense of performance and uh, also to those that made the effort to dress really appropriately for a concert performance. Um, you know this very well, Oscar, um, and you obviously enjoy it very, very much um, indeed. Um, you could have a slightly heavier beat, pushing through those relentless um, accents and pounding beats. Um, at the end, could you be even quieter, create more tension by holding the tempo back even more and hold that pause at the end for as long as you possibly can. Uh, but congratulations, Oscar, a very fluent and successful performance. Uh, number two, Elodie Rose, uh, The Reef by Walter Carroll. This is a very popular piece and rightly so. Um, it's such a lot of fun to play and you have tremendous flair when you play Elodie Rose. Uh, tremendous dramatic atmosphere was created and you held the tempo very well indeed. You didn't rush in the quieter sections and you had wonderful dynamics. Could you create even more mystery with your pianissimo tone and have perhaps even more writ um, at bars 21 and 22? Wonderfully majestic ending. Perhaps if you try and sink into the keys and use more body weight so that when you have a chord you go into the piano to create a more rounded sound that would be even more exciting but an excellent performance with real fluency and flair congratulations uh, we then had a sarah who played the sonatina by bender very strong opening this big bold tone a lovely lively tempo and you had a sense of energy and spirit about it finger works really going very well indeed, and generally was very well uh, controlled. Um, there's more room now for shaping within your phrases. Imagine your phrases like a sentence. 
Um, and when we speak, we always have ups and downs and our voice goes up here, and goes down and so on. Um, we never uh, speak in a flat line and so we should never play in a flat line unless the composer actually asks us to. The piano section from bar 17 especially needs more shaping. Um, and just remember, don't stop practicing um, with the metronome. I just noticed I've got a spelling mistake um, as I'm looking at yours. So I'm just rewriting that word so it's correct. Um, yeah, practice with the metronome still in places because you just need to make sure that the pulse is constant and that you don't lose sight of it, but very promising, lively playing from you. Very well done. Um, and then we had Albert with this wonderful holiday in Paris. <laughs> Wouldn't we all like to be there? Um, very thoughtful playing, sensitive tone, and you worked really hard to show all the different tempo changes on the score. See now if you can make them a little bit more seamless. It, at times it felt like we went from this tempo to that. Um, and remember to feel that you're dancing um, and that we need to sing. Um, be careful to balance your hands carefully. Um, Sometimes the accompanying lines didn't allow the melody to sing out as much as it could. Um, from bar 45 towards the end, a little bit more delicacy is needed and just listen carefully to make sure that you're playing absolutely all the right notes. If you listen back, you'll just perhaps notice a few, but very well done. Real musical promise in your playing, Albert. Thank you. Um, and then we had um, number five, Leomi, playing this lovely Brahms Lola de la Torche. Um, nice delicacy here. Um, I liked it very, very much indeed. And, and, and there was a real sense of style. Just think that you could actually be a little bold. I'm going to put my glasses on because I'm just going to play a little something. Um, so that the opening, which is marked piano, eight bars later, we then have forte, and it's the melody is in the left hand. I think you can be a lot bolder. This music can really take quite strong, very exact contrasts. Um, and the staccato, when you're playing quietly, could be a little shorter. And when you're loud, to be a little bit longer. Because then, if you're too short, it can sound a little bit aggressive. So, really, all you need to do is play around with the dynamics and make them much more exciting and dramatic. Shock your audience, this music can take it, but you play very well and you know it extremely well. So thank you very much. And then we had another Albert, number six. Uh, this time playing one of my favorite pieces indeed by Prokofiev, Peter's theme from Peter and the Wolf. Now, uh, you play this very well indeed, very good tempo. Um, I liked it, I thought it went very well indeed. I think um, you could have a little bit more playfulness now um, when I can find the music. Here we go. Um, so you've got some staccato, haven't you, in your right hand here. <laughs> So if you highlight those a little bit more, and here, make the most of this incredible interval coming. Yeah, so a little bit more strongly playful. Um, this music can take very big sounds and strong characterization. Um, so, you know, that wonderful augmented fifth. And then in the next bar, the perfect four. So we've had to so this. Isn't that wonderful? So don't 
shy away from it, overdo it actually. Um, and I think that will be even more um, persuasive. Um, last four bars, a little bit more drama, show the changes and the diminuendos at the end. Um, but lots to enjoy here and do listen to the orchestral version of it. I'm sure you have, um, but do listen to the orchestral version, which is very exciting. Um, and then we had um, number seven, Ben, uh, playing a piece by wonderful Walter Carroll called Shadows. Um, just to say, you know, when you introduce a piece, if you say I'm going to play Shadows, it's really nice to say who the composer is. I knew, but your audience may not. Um, so say, you know, Shadows by Walter Carroll. Um, nice tempo, you held the pulse very, very well. I think that the um, overall tone could be more cantabile, which means singing, and the dotted crotchets um, need to sing out a little bit more. Let me just show you when I find the music. Here we are. So it's in 6A, which, as I'm sure you know, means two in a bar, two dotted crotchets. Be careful that we don't sound like six quavers, that we don't get crotchets in the middle of the right hand this who I know very well and um, is a wonderful composer and a wonderful teacher. Um, very strong, confident, determined playing, all from memory, so very well done indeed. Um, you obviously like it very much. Um, to make it even more exciting, make sure that you only add the accents, the tenutos, etc., where they're marked on the score. Um, sometimes we can get overexcited and add more than there actually are, and then we don't appreciate them. So add them in where marked and make sure you're not doing them anywhere else. Um, sometimes you just need to keep the pulse stable. We can get very excitable when playing, when we're enjoying it, and we must never forget that the heartbeat of the piece, the pulse, needs to be steady to keep us um, on track. Um, to get the kind of the blues element of it, a little bit more gentle tone in the mezzo piano, more variety in, <coughs> excuse me, in the lower levels um, of the dynamics, um, but a very well prepared and strong performance. Thank you. And finally, I don't think I've missed anyone else, um, Zoe who played the wonderful Innocence uh, by Bergmuller. Very elegant and professional introduction, Zoe, well done. And you played from memory, proving how well you know this piece. You've worked very hard to keep all the semi-quavers even. Just be careful, when you get to bar nine, I bet you know what I'm gonna say, don't hurry. You're inclined to be in a bit of a rush to get on with it. Um, and I'm sure you know that the word gracioso at the beginning means to play gracefully. So always make sure your ears are listening to what you're doing and making sure that you always produce a sweet, beautiful sound. Every time you have a two note, two note slurs, listen to the second one, making sure we don't get, you know, but anything from the piece just using a two note slur to show you it's a limit to how much I can have on my computer um, but always remember that your fingers must sing all right you can't sing actually with your voice but you can sing through your fingers 
Um, but you've got wonderful fluency already and I really look forward to hopefully hearing you again one day. So thank you very much indeed, Zoe. So what a lovely class. This was the first class that I actually listened to um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I know that probably, especially if you win the class, you, you think that, that that's the best thing ever. And of course, it's wonderful. However, this isn't like a game of football, okay? Because everyone has their own personality. Everyone is on a different musical journey and some of you will have been playing for longer than others some of you are older etc so please if you haven't got first second or third please don't be disheartened because honestly you're all doing brilliantly i loved every one of your performances keep going keep being individual keep singing and keep smiling so um the third place i don't give out marks and i don't say surnames um so i just say your first name so congratulations third place number five leone and second place congratulations number one oscar and the first place with a very lovely mark which i'm not telling you <laughs> but you'll be very pleased and that's first place to number two Elodie Rose. So thank you very much girls and boys, keep up the good work and hope to see you all soon. Bye! So this is class 104 and it's the grades 5 to 6 class. Um, forgive me if I keep touching her, my computer screen and I hope that my organisational skills hold up. I've got all your reports and I've got some of the music as well. Um, impossible to get every piece of music up on my screen and cope with it all, um, but I will just do a little bit of playing for, for some of them. Um, but first of all, congratulations to you all. I thoroughly enjoyed every performance. I would like to say a little bit to each of you. I just say your first name, forgive me if I don't pronounce it correctly. Um, and at the end, we will have the results, uh, first name only, uh, no marks, although you will get marks on your report form. So we started with Dinithi playing a very lovely piece by Catherine Rolling called Love Theme. Very sensitive tone um, and thank you for introducing your performance, which many of you did, and that really helped to give a sense of occasion and a sense of performance. Um, I think that you could have a little bit more fun um, with the way that you um, produce your tone um, in the melody. Let me just see if I can find. Here we go. So it says to be very expressive. So when a composer says be very expressive, that means you can really go to town. And this isn't like playing a piece of Mozart or Beethoven. This is a very free sort of no, no rules really. Um, except trying to sort of do what's on the page for the composer. So we start with a very simple introduction in the left hand. Apologies about the squeaky pedal. Um, very simple. But when the melody comes in, make sure that your right hand has a little bit more sound and substance. Make sure the left hand is very delicate. But when we get this wonderful B flat in the next bar, let's really celebrate that. Really, don't feel that you can't. Um, 
I don't think anyone would say, oh dear, you're being far too expressive. Um, really just wallow. It's the sort of piece to wallow in. Um, imagine a violinist, what they would do with that vibrato in, in the melody. You can really hear that richness there. So have a little bit more fun um, with that element of it. Um, just be careful at the coda, just a few little slips in the rhythm. And uh, remember to coax the sound from the piano, all right? Really lift it out um, with real tenderness. So very well done, a promising young pianist here and with an obvious musical ear, so very well done. Uh, then uh, number two, Sophie, with this wonderful Serenade sur l'eau by Hubert. Um, you know this very, very well, um, and you really tried hard to keep the pulse very steady. Just remember that the time signature, which is 9-8, means there are three beats in a bar, three dotted crotchets. At the moment, I was just a little bit too aware of individual quavers. So if you remember three in a bar, the first beat, the dotted crotchet, first dotted crotchet is the most, then the second beat is less and the third less still. So if you think about that, that will lighten it up a little bit more and give us a sense of flowing water. Um, I think with a slightly more flowing tempo as well, it will be easier to project the phrases um, it just felt like it needed to move a little bit more. When you're practicing, don't be afraid to sing out loud, okay? No one's listening and it's very helpful because when you sing, you have to remember to breathe. And as pianists, we do forget to breathe. So just remember to keep singing. I've written a few things on the report form for you to try out, um, but this is coming on very well indeed. So thank you very much, Sophie. Um, then we had um, the first, you hear this piece a lot, La Chever, I can't say it, Chevaleresque, there we go, by Berg Muller. Well, well done, Sunyat, uh, playing from memory, very secure, you know it very well, and you worked hard to keep the pulse as regular as you can do. Um, there were a few slips here and there, but you didn't let them bother you, so very well done. Um, have a lot more fun now, brighter staccato, uh, stronger dynamics. It is surprising how much we need to do to make dynamics come across. If we're not careful, um, it can all sound a little bit the same. So be braver, be bolder. The delicato in the middle section could be a little bit more gentle and work on controlling the triplets. Um, but lots of good work on the semiquavers at the end. Just remember, although you're working very hard to keep it even, also add musical shaping. But I enjoyed that very much. Thank you, Sunyat. Um, and now we uh, went to Manol, who played a very uh, nice piece by Howard Shaw in Dreams, very well-known piece. Very successful. You played from memory and you captured some of the sensitivity. Um, you could be a little bit more rich, I think, let me find it, here we go. So um, after the introduction, when we get to the very well-known theme, don't be afraid to be rich with your sound. You did slightly cut the dotted crotchets, okay? So work on that a little bit um, and don't be afraid to really sing with richness. Um, but very enjoyable playing. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and then, let me just get rid of that. I'm getting so many tabs open here, sorry. Um, and then we had another performance of the piece that I can't say by Bergmüller, La Chevrolesque. Chevrolesque. Um, this time, Lisaki. Uh, 
Bravo, lovely playing from memory. Very happy, bright atmosphere. Some nice cheeky staccato there. I liked it very, very much. And beautiful shaping in the middle section. I have to say, when I listened to you play, I was smiling a lot. You made me very happy. So that's great. And it should be, it should be a happy piece. So you did the job, very well done. Um, just work right at the end on those semi-quavers. They're generally pretty even, but can you get them even stronger? Really work on really strong fingers so that it drives through really confidently. But what a vibrant, happy performance. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and then we have Laurent with the, um, the Rondo uh, by Kulau. So thank you very much for this performance. Lovely, charming tempo, worked very well, and some lovely sensitivity. So it helped to make this very convincing. Um, just towards the end, make sure you keep the focus and concentration because the quality wasn't quite what it was earlier. Listen carefully to your left hand. Um, sometimes the third quaver of the bar um, sounds a little bit too heavy. So just listen. Um, you're inclined to what I call sit, like you're doing that on the last uh, note of the bar. Um, so just a little bit of technical work needed in places, but this is a very, very promising performance and you are uh, definitely a musician, I hear real sensitivity there. So thank you very much indeed. <clears throat> Maisie now uh, with uh, Opening Night Jazz by Martha Meyer. Very confident, fluent performance and the rhythms were very easily projected. I guess really the thing I want you to do is just have a bit more fun. Um, you've done all that hard work. So let's show more excitement every time you have an accent, staccatos, the rests, everything. You know, can you do it with a little bit more of a sort of naughty twinkle in your eye um, and have fun? You play it all very easily technically and there was a lovely writ um, in the middle. Um, and when we come back to the change, uh, back to tempo one, um, I think it's bar 29, just make sure that all the kind of syncopations and rhythms and bursts of energy have real sort of excitement and thrill about them. Um, so a very, very able, confident young pianist here, um, just needing to let your musical hair down just a little bit more, but very well done. Um, and... Now, um, Lilia with a uh, lovely Ainaudi, who's very popular, Elegy for the Arctic. Some very lovely sensitivity um, in this piece uh, from you. Lovely sound, um, and you obviously like the piece very much indeed. It's an unusual composer in that, um, you know, there's a lot of repetition. Um, and very subtle changes and your job as a performer is to show the listener these subtle changes. So for example, um, he writes towards the end um, sort of similar length phrases with pauses on the dotted crotches. You have to be quite skillful in not making the pauses all the same. Um, it would be very easy to do that, but why don't you think about different ways? I'll exaggerate just to give you an example. Here we go. slightly mystical quality that is um, so hypnotic um, with Einaudi. Um, you could have a little bit more colour when a piece is all very similar in dynamic 
Um, we need to work to make more colour within that dynamic level. So don't be afraid to explore some more variety of sound. But thank you very much indeed for playing that piece. And our final performer was number 10, Caitlin, with Film Noir by Mike Cornick, very popular composer. Great atmosphere was created here, very good sense of style, punchy shape, crisp staccato, rhythms handled very well indeed. A few places you just need to be a little bit more rigorous um, with the counting and the discipline. I've written bar 15, um, you cut short. Um, and the rests are as important, sometimes even more important than the notes themselves. And I don't think you were sort of giving them as much uh, consideration as you could do. Uh, bar 17, that left hand crotchet, you know, really drives them through. It gives it real excitement. Um, this composer gives you lots of information on the page, endless markings, accents, tenutos, changes of dynamics, articulation, and so on. So in a way, you know, one of the things you need to do is just look at the score and make sure you're really doing what he asks of you. Um, and don't be afraid with the offbeat notes to really punch them out with a little bit more shocking sound. You know, it's not the sort of piece to be too gentle with. You know, we want to be a little bit sort of, sort of eyes open wide, wow, isn't that amazing? Um, you know, so, so go for it, all right, have a lot of fun. So thank you very much indeed. So um, as I said, uh, we do have, I'm just closing my tabs, here we go. So we do have uh, results and I have to say there were a lot of you on the same mark, very similar marks, very close marks in this class with lots of very enjoyable performances, but it is my job. Um, to give um, a first place and I would also like to award a second place so on this occasion I would like to give the second place and 87 to number six Laurent congratulations and um, the first place uh, for a really lovely happy performance number five Lissaki Congratulations. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again in person, but keep going, keep smiling, keep playing. Thank you very much indeed. And this is class 105, which is the grade seven and eight class. So it's been a real pleasure for me to listen to all your performances, even though we're not together in person. As I was listening to all your very well prepared performances and introduced and you took bows, I really felt like we were actually in a festival and I was listening to a class. So um, I've had a lot of fun. Who would have thought a year ago that this is how we would run the 2021 festival? Um, but Thanks to the organisers and uh, their vision, they've been able to keep this festival going and give you all the platform for performance and something to look forward to. Even though we can't wait for face-to-face -face lessons to return and more sense of normality, some of the lessons that we've learned over the last year, um, the skills that we've learned will carry us forward, one of which is recording. Um, I'm sure many of you send recordings to your teachers regularly and preparing for a festival such as this, I think is a really invaluable lesson that we've all learnt. And as a teacher, um, we, my, personally, um, I use it a lot more than I've ever done before, getting pupils to send in recordings. It's a wonderful way of learning, listening, being critical to what you're doing. So don't stop, even though we're hopefully going back to face-to-face -face lessons. So I'd like to say a little bit to each of you. Um, so I'll go through you in order. Um, I don't say your surnames, just your first name. Forgive me if I uh, say it wrong, <laughs> I'll do my best. Um, and at the end, um, when I do announce uh, the results, I don't say the marks. They'll be there on your report forms when you get them. So we started off with number one, Farouk who played the um, jig from the B-flat partita of Bach. Um, this was all played from memory, 
very, very fluent um, performance, tremendous fluency, very bubbling, very, very naturally bubbling lines. Um, I think at the highest level, we could have more variety of sound. Your ornaments were a little bit too um, lyrical. For a jig, I think they can be snappy, that sort of much crisper. Okay, so just try and get your ornamentation a little bit crisper. Um, more poise at the end. Remember that, you know, when we're playing Bach, there's a sort of an, a sense of control always. We, we must never feel out of control. Um, but these were very, very small things. This was a very high level performance indeed. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed it and was really very impressed indeed. So thank you very much, Tharuk. And I'm just getting your next form up. I'm hoping that I've got you all in order. <laughs> um, so number two, Oliver uh, played a wonderful Scarlatti Sonata in D. Very successful. Um, lots of the ornamentation very, very clearly projected, which was great. Um, just remember that in the time signature, which is 12-8, we need to be aware not of individual quavers, but of the beats. And obviously, when you've got four beats in a bar, 12, 8, four dotted crotches, um, you need to have more lightness on the second and the fourth beats. Um, so they were a little heavy for me at times. Um, and also the third quaver of each beat was inclined to be a little heavy as well. Um, if you try and get a lighter, more delicate touch, this will help to make the performance feel more fluid and a little bit more naturally forward looking. But lots of promise in this performance, Oliver, so very well done indeed. Um, and then we had, I hope this is right, Shishi, uh, who played Telemann uh, Vivace from the Fantasia. Um, a very successful performance for the most part, very generally secure and in good shape. I do think it needs to be a little bit more energetic. It, it sounded not quite as lively as I think it could uh, do. Um, articulation could be brighter and lighter um, and a little bit too much awareness of the bar lines. So very aware of where the first beats were. And if you're going to play a very lively piece, we don't want to have too much of that. We want the lines to be going forward. Um, and as is often the case in this style of music, very little on your score um, to say how to play it. So that's why you have to have tremendous imagination and ideas about what to do with it. So you've got all the fun to do, really, because you've done a lot of hard work on learning it. But you now need to add more colour, variety of sound and touch to really bring it alive. But thank you very much for your play. Number four. Danuka, uh, Allegro from, by Kulau. Uh, it's a sonatina in C. I think it's clear that you've worked very hard to make this very even and very controlled. Um, there were tiny little slips, but really it didn't matter. The, the stamina and the concentration are what needs to be really worked on to get it consistent, because you can do it, but it's keeping it the whole way through. I think um, using a metronome will be helpful. Um, certainly in lockdown and lessons online, metronomes have become rather a big feature um, to keep time because obviously you can't play with someone when they're online because of the time lag. So metronomes have become very, very big news um, in lessons. I do think you could use it a little bit more because your pulse was a little variable at times. Um, but you've got a lot of personality in your playing and that came over very well indeed. Thank you. And now I believe you, you're called Gina, yeah? Um, so thank you for the notes on that. So it's Gina, number five, playing the very famous Sonne, Sonata Pathetique by Beethoven, the last movement. Lovely tempo, very well done. Um, Beethoven does demand us to play in a very firm, strict tempo. Um, 
that's the main thing you've got a lot of passion a lot of flair and passion but we have to be in control so um i think that you also need to be using the metronome a little bit more okay because some of these passages are quite tricky and what we can't do is slow down to make it a little easier we have to keep that pulse the same so there are places where you are changing the tempo so that you can sort of get around it and we need to get over that so a little bit more metronome work needed so that your technique fits the music uh, but lots of promise in your playing too so thank you very much indeed and then number six uh, Vinuki wonderful Takata by Kachaturian you know it very well um, and you played very confidently from memory. I think uh, the main thing I would say to you is to expand your whole range of sound. It needs to be much, much bigger from very, very pianissimo to FFF and everything in between. So it was just all a little bit too in a small scale. So if you could work on that, show everything much more, to get the massive sound, use a little bit more body weight behind your sound, and in the really gorgeous middle section, much more colour needed. Um, you've got all the necessary uh, technical things, to uh, requirements to, to let this be a great performance, so you just need to have a bit more fun with it, let your hair down and discover much more colour in the music. Thank you. Um, number seven, Ariane playing Mozart, Allegro, uh, from the B-flat Sonata. Warm, um, sincere playing uh, from you. It came across that you like the piece um, and that you uh, have learned it very well, playing very confidently from memory. Um, there are places that need a little bit more tidy technical work. Um, and sometimes the musical direction got a little lost. Remember that uh, Mozart always must have elegance and poise, even when things get you know, technically challenging, never lose sight of the poise and the elegance. Um, listen very carefully to every note that you play, so that when you have any two note slurs or phrases, that you listen to the ends to make sure the sound blends beautifully. And do listen to other pieces of Mozart, operas, songs, string quartets, so that you can hear how his phrasing um, and how he sort of sort of builds up on his sound so that we don't just think about playing the piano, we think of other instruments. But some promising work, well done. Um, Ivan, number eight. This time Bach, uh, the Saraband and Jig, uh, from the English Suite in A minor. So again, very well known, played from memory with confidence. Um, Saraband, very strong, big, bold sound. Do remember it's a dance, okay? So because it's a dance, there has to be a sense of lilting shape. I think you need to listen a little bit more carefully. Really tune your, what do they say? Tune your ears to concert pitch. Um, really make sure they're listening to, uh, to every note. Less awareness of individual quavers and more awareness of the longer lines. Feel the rise and fall within the shade. Uh, sorry, within the phrases, rise and fall within the phrases. Jig, um, again, a little bit more lilting. Um, notes are very secure. It just needs to be lighter, more buoyant. A jig is a very happy, lively dance. So a little bit more buoyancy needed here, but some very good work going on there, Ivan. Thank you. And lastly, uh, number nine, Tharushi. Uh, playing Rondo by Bella Bartok. Again, you know it very well. I'm so impressed. So many of you playing from memory, really working hard on that. So very, very good. Um, in the score, there are very specific markings for you throughout lots and lots of specifics. So 
do make sure that you're really doing what's on the page because in many ways that's the main thing if you do what's there and do it very clearly and vividly that's most of it done okay um metronome markings at various places i've written need to be a bit more exact it was not quite as as vibrant as it could be it was inclined to be all the same tempo what was actually there's lots of changes of tempo in the andante section a little bit more expressive sing through um and every time the time signature changes so this piece has quite a few changes of time signature you need to show it a little bit more clearly okay but some really promising playing and you've got some very natural um, ability indeed so what a lovely class thank you all very much indeed and i'm sure you're looking forward to getting back to your face-to-face -face lessons and i hope to hear you all again um, sometime in a festival in person which would be lovely so to the results then um in third place I mustn't say the mark, <laughs> I just remembered. But in third place, we have number nine, and that's Tharushi, congratulations. Second place, number six, and that's Venuki. And the first place to number one, Tharuk. So thank you all very much indeed. Keep up the good work, keep playing, keep smiling, keep making music, and I'll see you all again, hopefully, in the future. Take care. Bye.